College football fans, the championship is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook is making sure you can throw down on the epic showdown for a shot at big bucks. New customers can score 150 instantly on bonus bets for betting $5 on the championship game. Michael Penix versus J.J. McCarthy is bound to be a good one. Both those teams are going to play some good defense also. It'll be fun to watch. Download the app now and use the code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. New customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just 5 bucks on college football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook using promo code VOCH, V-O-C-H, VOCH. The crown is yours. What's up, y'all? We back with another edition. Hey, look, clean your eyes out. Smooth them out real good. This is not last week's episode. This is this week's episode. And allegedly, there's going to be a week after that episode, all right? So y'all be sure to tune in right around this time, Friday, 1, 2, 3 p.m. Central. Whatever time it is, y'all be on the lookout because me and Brian, are, we are going to do this a whole bunch. Brian Bryce, how you doing, sir? Doing excellent, sir. Just uh, working on the draft. Excited about that and excited to be with you uh as we talked about on a weekly basis, yeah. this will be fun. I really enjoy working with you. I enjoy your audience. I think there's some great interaction. And uh, so, yeah, it's this is this is an easy one for me. This oh, is man. a really easy one for me to do. Fantastic. So what we're going to do here, and I don't think anybody has a show like this, Brian, right? But we're just going <laughs> to bit by bit break down the top 10 or so offensive linemen, 11, 12. If you haven't yeah. watched them, just simply go haven't seen them and I'll tell you about yeah. them or vice versa and, and sure. we'll just do it like that but afterwards I, I do have a couple of easy cowboy questions because we got to open up with easy cowboy questions get everybody sure. settled then we're going to go a little crazy um do you feel like we got enough of a look from Austin Richards Brock Hoffman and TJ Bass to team build this thing moving forward with them man it's a great question right off the jump uh I think you got to look at TJ Bass, Hoffman, I think you got a, a decent look at. Awesome Richards, no look. You know, you're, you're just what you're what you're going to base your evaluation on of Awesome Richards will be training camp and practices. But practices when you get back to the star, getting ready for a game, are a lot different than what we see in Oxnard. Sure. So. But with you throwing Bass in there and Hoffman into actual game action, I think you have an idea what you have. Sure, sure. And, you know, that was my thing too. But then I started to get nervous and make, you know, caveats, right? I was like, okay, well, that's Brock yeah. Hoffman versus the Cardinals, right? Or that's sure. Hoffman and those guys versus a quitting third string Washington football Wizards team that, you know, maybe they were checked out or whatever, right? Can I count on these guys for – five games, you know, six games, something like that. And I think one thing that my audience is trying to balance, and I can ask you this also, how do you balance, right, when you're building offensive line? How do you balance, I want to be really good there or I'll be fine right there? Let's go and build something else, right? Because Bass showed you we're fine. Hoffman showed you enough to where we're cool, right? But if we're in this window where we're trying to win a Super Bowl, should we go and draft a dude that's better than them, like way better than them, skill-wise better than them, and then plug that person in? You know, I feel confident about uh, about Bass. Mm -hmm. I feel confident about Bass playing guard. Sure. But I'm going to go into this offseason feeling like that I need to get better at center. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you feel about uh, Tyler Biotish, but I – I feel like there were a couple of areas where the run game struggled. Sure. And I think he was part of that. Mm -hmm. And there were times where he was a capable NFL lineman, the center. I thought he did a decent job with the the calls, the communications, things you need to ask your center to do. Mm -hmm. But there were some limitations there. Second level blocks, securing guys at the line of scrimmage, maybe some combo blocks that I felt like that if you had a more powerful guy, a bigger guy, a more athletic guy, that maybe the running game would have been a little bit different. Sure. And so I'm, you know, and people are talking about playing TJ Bass at center. I haven't seen that. I've seen him play guard. I've seen him play well at guard. Mm -hmm. But as we get through this draft process, and you and I will talk about that there's some centers in this draft, and there's some centers that have got extreme toughness, physicality, and, and athletic ability. and. Yeah. You know, you look at what those teams are able to do that have really good centers. And and, it, and the Cowboys did for, you know, for that period of Travis Frederick. You you know, that was kind of the you – know, they had the golden age of offensive line here in the 90s, the Super Bowl teams. But then you look at some of those lines that Tony Romo played and especially Dak Prescott's first year and how they – you know, that – that so you got to be – you, you want to build five great ones. 
it's not always possible. But I think the important ones for the Cowboys are the the, the center. It's got to be one that they've got to address. I think we can look at all these spots and, yeah. you know, feel a certain way about it. You know, uh, sure. you know, Terrence, Terrence is off the injury. You know, Zach is 90 years old. You know, Tyron is a different type of 90 years. Like, yeah. like his body is 110, but his soul right. is still, you know what I mean? He's a, right. he, he's a guy that we have questions about. And it's not like Chuma Doga is making you feel better because he don't know the plays. It's not like, you know, Ball and Walesco are, are doing anything for you. Um I just don't want Cowboy fans like, yo, Vice, Leo Collins next year. What are we doing? I don't, I don't want us looking at that situation. Tyler is a, Tyler's like, yo, Tyler Smith is the only concrete situation that I feel good about. But I don't know what position he's going to play. Because if your coach gets fired, the next dude may be like, hey, I want Tyler to play left tackle, right? So all this is very much in the air still. So um, if I do feel like I had to get something this draft, I would love for it to be center. And the more film I watch, there are more and more centers um, that I feel like can play. Um, but we really just just need all of them. And I, I don't think we have the picks to to double dip. So we may have to tape up Tyron for one more year. We, you know, yeah, we, I, I was going to ask you this. Are you, are you okay with bringing Tyron Smith back understanding the plan that you're probably going to miss him for three games sure. and you're going to have to not practice him at all. I think they have an understanding of how to get through a season, but you know, do you worry about personally, do you worry about that position holding you hostage this year? Are you okay with, with, uh, with uh, Tyron Smith playing one more campaign? I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay, but we can't be lazy with the backup plan. Right. So yeah. I want to draft a tackle anyway, because Tyron is 90 years old. So when it's right. time for him to leave, all right, we just plug the young guy in. Also, the young guy could be your backup or the young guy could be your swing tackle or something like that. It's just that, you know, Tyron Smith has has proved that practice does not always make perfect. As long sure. as he feels okay walking into the game, he's a Hall of Famer. He's good to go. He's seen – he's seen the, like there's nothing that Josh Sweat could could show Tyron that he needed to weekly prep for. You know, Tyron's seen enough of it. So as long as he's doing that, I, I can assume he'll, he'll, he'll just give me 13 games, 14 games. I can assume. Um, but I just can't have Chuma Adoga not knowing the plays. I can't have, um, you know – we don't know what Richards is, right? So I think yeah. you have to go for left tackle with some type of urgency. Also, your right tackle could be a dude that this that this young that this young tackle could benefit from. But I'm sure. I'm willing to roll with Tyron Smith. 100%. So the only the only position you honestly feel great at, and maybe I'm using too strong of a word with great, is the left guard. Is the left that's guard. That's the only you, the yeah. left guard. The yeah. only that's the only one. Yeah. Cause I feel yeah, good, I, I, I see where you're going there. I see where you're going Cause there. Cause look, I yeah. feel I feel great about the right guard until I feel great about the left tackle until. Yeah. You know, Terrence still has his days, but I felt good about him until, you know, I mean, until his knee yeah. went bad, right? So if he what has you, a, so go ahead. Well, yeah, what, I'm sorry. What did you feel happened to Terrence Smith? Uh, t- excuse me, uh Terrence Steele this uh year? What what happened to him? On social Was it the injury? Was on, it the injury? On social media. Shouts out to Duke Manuel because he has a, a just a knack of he taking. He does a great job. He takes these, these broken linemen and he makes them amazing. He was yeah. saying that it had a lot to do with um, how ten, how Terrence is being coached to attack people. So okay. So Mike Solari allegedly wants him to do a whole bunch of high you know yeah. um, high hand low hand, but Terrence didn't yeah. didn't make his money being high hand. He didn't make his money being high hand low no. high hand low hand guy. Mm-mm. He was more so I'm gonna punch you and we're gonna move and go for the ride or run game guy. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. since he is a long guy, he is a tall long guy. Solari yes. and this is all just assumption. Solari feels like he should be high hand low handed, but Terrence yeah. isn't good at it. Tyrus that, that's is, that that's the truth that 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 that's the truth of and you could see a guy that has some length having problems with that they sure. had that Paul that problem with Paul Alexander if you remember when Paul Alexander exactly. came in here exactly and all of a sudden all these guys are looking at each other like high hand low hand and then they're they, and it kind of puts you off balance the way that you play mm-hmm. and the one thing that Terrence Steele can't do is play off balance because sure. it's a problem for him and so yeah, I, you know, it, it's unfortunate. It really, really is that, you know, that, and this, I, I, I really do believe this, you know, because of my experience, you talk about the importance of a coach mm-hmm. and your coordinators, I think are super important. Yeah. I think your offensive line coach is the next most important guy on your team, mm. you know, of your staff. And if you get that wrong, that sets you back. And, 
you know, Mike Solari is an old school guy. I mean, he's, he's, you know, he's back. You could trace him all the way back to the Landry days sure. in the, in the late eighties, you know, when he was a young guy getting a start there, but man, it, it it's, if you get that position wrong, it, that, 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 that's tough, man. That is a tough thing on your guys. One last thing about steel is, you know, the, just the type of player that he is, right? Like he's yeah. a, like he's a, like he, he worked hard to get here. You know, right. Tyler Smith is a specimen. Tyron is a yeah. specimen. You know, Zach Martin is right. a specimen. Terrence had a rough start. Right. Texas Tech, they didn't run. <laughs> they never ran the football. Yeah, right? two point stance the whole day, the yeah. whole way. Right. So he had yeah. to learn and he had to develop. He had to lift weights and get strong. He had to go see Duke to get like this. Right. He wasn't just right. like Tyler. So, of course, if there were any setbacks, there were there were bound to be some bad film to come out from that. And, and Terrence had a pretty big setback, but hopefully because yeah. we need him to get back on whatever he was yeah. on in 2022 or whatnot. But yeah, yep. it is what it is. Uh, let me ask you this, Brian Broaddus. When you're um, watching film on these line, you're evaluating mm -hmm. talent, former scout, right? How do you evaluate whether a left tackle could possibly play right tackle? Or you watch these right tackles and you go, man, I need a left tackle though. Can this kid play left tackle? How do you evaluate that? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a, it's to me. It's a really about the the footwork, mm -hmm. and you you can you can really tell. Sometimes there's some guys. What's so amazing to me now, Vosh, is these these three hundred and sixty pound yeah. tackles, yeah. and you know three hundred and fifty seven pound tackle and three hundred forty six seven you know, six seven. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, they're just massive dudes, yeah. and. You know, I remember guys like Flozell Adams, yeah. I, one of the biggest human beings I'd ever seen, you know, play tackle mm -hmm. and just the ease of movement that he had. And, you know, he started off as a guard and then moved to tackle and all. Larry Allen, I mean, not the, I mean, just massive guys, but, but that, you know, this was a different, that was a different era than what we play with today. And so, you know, the, there's so much emphasis in the college game now on passing. Mm -hmm. And these guys do get you know, these big tackles do get a lot of work playing that way. So you can see if 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 I'm watching a tackle and he's constantly getting attacked on the outside shoulder and he just can't get there, mm -hmm. that's when I go, I go, okay, you gotta start thinking about maybe kicking him inside because you know, of you know, he's he's not gonna be able to handle stuff in space. I think the New York Giants are dealing with that, you know, with the guys that they've drafted. They've yeah. drafted some big mammoth guys that just cannot get to the edge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's a problem that way. But my evaluation, I mean, if you see one of these six, seven, 340 pound dudes constantly getting away from the line of scrimmage, constantly getting in 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 the path of the rusher, extending keeping them, you know, if, if it's a guy that's constantly pushing, I use the word constantly here now, but if you're pushing a guy continuously past the quarterback, you know, that, 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 that can end up to be in a disaster. You have to be able to stay between the quarterback and the, the rusher there and, and do it on a basis where, you know, you're not those, those, those pressures off the edge uh, are not being, uh, being shown. So that's, that's how I do it. If a guy it's, it's, there's a couple of things. Mm -hmm. You give me that guy that can get to the edge, that can that can kick to the outside, and give me the give me the corner that can carry the route inside. Yeah. If I see those two things, I think you could play football. Okay, because we have a lot of um, you know tackles in this draft in particular. Right? Yeah, we got a lot of tackles, and some of them play right tackle. And some of those dudes, just by the way of how this um, how this uh, draft is going, one of these dudes might be available for you. I don't know for sure, but there's a there 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 just seems to be more top tier right tackles in this draft than I've ever seen. Um, and um, J C Latham from Alabama is one of them. Brian, yeah. what you what you uh, think about the right tackle number sixty five, J C Latham from Alabama? I'll tell you what, yeah, that's when you watch Latham play. There's another one of those big, massive guys. But as you 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 know as your clips are showing here though. He plays really light on his feet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's you know the down block there that you're seeing right there. Then that leads to a second level block. There's the adjust right there. There's the twist. You know, those are the things right there. Pass the twist inside. Now pick the guy. That's awareness of your offensive tackle. Yeah. See, that's keeping your eyes. That's not getting. And the Cowboys got in a little trouble with this this year. Man, doing some man stunts right there. Alabama did a really good job of passing that thing off. But mm -hmm. there you go. See, he, see how wide he's going to kick and he's going to keep that guy pinned to the outside. That's a tackle that's responsible for the width of the pocket right there. Sure. Great job by him right there, just kind of 
you know, making sure that the width was good and where they needed to be, that Milrow had a place to to stand and throw that football. Yeah. Got some good hands too, Brian. Just me, just me. He does. Watching, you know, he just, does. Yeah. yeah. You know, just finding guys, hand fighting, getting them in the right yeah. place, taking them for a ride. Um, it's one, one thing that's constantly going to, you know, bother me, Brian, is mm-hmm. if, if you're going to be humongous, I want you to play like you're, like you're humongous. I want you True. to move people. I like when I see big guys moving people, right? Because you're living up right. to my expectation. Now there's something that's not translating with him that makes him very powerful in the run game. And, mm-hmm. His anchor is kind of here or there in the passing game. Maybe maybe he's he's one of these guys that's better moving forward than he is backwards. I don't know. Because he moves fantastic backwards. He's just not strong backwards, but he's really strong moving forward. Probably because he's leaning on people. But um, I like J.C. Latham a bunch, and he's a guy that I've been seeing, um, you know, from, hey, he's a top five guy, or he possibly could slide. And – if he could play left tackle, I'm not sure. That's why I asked. If he could mm-hmm. play left tackle and he falls, I don't think he will. Um, I think that he's a guy that our uh, you know fan base audience should be uh, should be looking for. Yeah, no, I, I think that you're absolutely right about him. I, I you know, I I think that to me, and I and I and I mentioned about you know some of the things that the Giants are dealing with and and stuff. I I, I kind of feel like that he's going to need to lose some weight. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't think he could play at 360 pounds. That's what I was watching, you know, the way that I had for him. And, you know, I could see him moving inside. I could see him stand at right tackle. I think that he – there'll be comparisons to Neil, who was drafted, you know, that, that just a massive guy. But I think he's a better player than Neil. Mm-hmm. I don't see the balance problems with Latham I saw with Neil. So, you know, when you start looking at those massive guys, I mean, he, he's he got some natural movement to him. And, and I really – you know, that's for a big man, you know, you just, he just moves so well, but I don't know if I, I would, I would play him at left tackle. I just, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I think like with, yeah, you, I think you almost have to have some elite movement to be the left tackle just because of some of the rushers. Now these rushers are moving around, sure. you know, all over the place. You know, you have to be able to handle them on, on really both sides of the formation. But, man, I, I just think that there's going to have to be with this guy, there's going to have to be some weight loss. And, you know, the thing about it is, though, this Alabama had a chance to play this kid at left tackle. Mm. And the coaches decided against it because they didn't want to – they didn't want to – they wanted to try and develop a left tackle and not weaken the right side. Mm. So, you know, they could have moved him over and they didn't do it. They yeah. just said, you know what, we'll develop somebody on the left side. But – He's a damn good player. It's just I don't know if I would play him at left tackle. Not at that weight, I don't think I would. Understood, understood. Um, Your guy right here, clear consensus, number one, you would say? Joe Alt from Notre Dame? Yeah. Left left tackle? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We were were talking about uh, the other day on a show, if we had the first overall pick, Mm -hmm. the Cowboys had the first overall pick, who would you take? And you know, guys were talking you know, quarterbacks and stuff, unfortunately. But, you know, the I, I, I was I was leaning on Joe Alt is who I was leaning on. Yeah. I was like, fine, I'll I'll be fine with Dak. I'll just but give me Joe Alt to play. You know, this this guy is I scouted his dad, John. So it's kind of, you know, I'm starting to get into that point where I'm scouting a lot of these uh, kids' fathers, or I had scouted them, but mm-hmm. I mean, you talk the length he has. I mean, he, he's a 322-pound guy, and and man, his the frame, everything about him, it's he just moves so well. It's rare if he's even on the ground. Yeah. He plays a lot in this two-point stance, and and but he doesn't have any real weakness when it comes run or pass. I mean, you could watch him as a run blocker. He comes off, gets right into a guy, and then there's movement. Yeah. And for a tall guy, he's able to kind of play with leverage and and he plays through the whistle. I, I love the toughness that this kid shows. Yeah. Um fantastic as a run blocker, Brian. Whenever he yeah, gets hands, like really. he he gets people out of the film. Just like this right here. He yeah. moves dudes out of the film. He finishes dudes. He's looking yeah. to 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 find where he can he can he can move really well. He's a second level blocker, screen blocker. And, and right. My, my my only thing about him at hold on, let me find this clip for you. My only thing about him as a as a pass blocker is that he gets a little leany sometimes, right here. He just yeah. just 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 leans a bit. But he's a powerful dude and he wants to get hands on you, right? This isn't something right. that that you know can't be fixed or can't be coached or anything like that. But uh, but besides just this little, I'm way over my knees that he's doing right now that yeah. I hate. This dude, uh, I think he's a he's a can't miss prospect. I don't think you can miss. No, he, he's yeah, you're right, Vach. I mean, he is a a he's plug and play as they come. Yeah. And when you when you look at him and 
you know, he's he's had really good days against some quality edge players, and he's just, you know, stood up. And, and you know, you're right about the little bit of getting out uh, over the top of his feet a little bit. I think the thing about him is when he gets off balance, though, he can quickly get back to balance. Sure. Mm, you know, yeah. some of these guys, some of these guys, you know, I was watching the uh, uh, Van Parn. I think I pronounced it right, the center from sure. Georgia. Sure. And what happens is Van Parn, he's tall, and he gets yanked. You know, and you you don't see people yank. You know, yeah, here we are with the good job of getting the clip. That's a good play right there. But see, to me, when you watch him pass block, he gets real straight up, up and down. And then people pull him. And for a big man, they pull him out of his stance. And you don't see that with with Alt and and guys like that. Sure. You know, but but the, this Parm, he he's man, he's a tough tough guy. We were we were talking about centers the other day and. And uh, his name came up, but, uh, you know, uh, but I, I just, it was, it just bothered me how he got snatched yeah. a couple of times there uh, as yeah. a, as a pass blocker. Um, But Hey, like if we had to guess, right. It's, it's, it's him being a taller dude. He like, you know, six, four or something like that. And, yeah. and you know, sometimes to get your hat level down, you have to almost lean a little bit. Um, right. But we're not looking for leany people. We're looking for bendy people. You have to be able to bend. Bendy, yeah. Knees. Bendy people that, you know, that's the thing when we were talking about Duke and what he does for, you know, for linemen, he teaches them to play with that knee bend. Yeah. You know, if you get a guy that's tall. It's sometimes it's hard for a very tall guy to just bend his knees. Mm-hmm. It just is. It, sometimes if you're tall, you don't have a lot of lower body power. Sure. You just don't. And, uh, you know, it's hard to kind of play at that level, but, uh, I'll tell you what, that all, man, what a pleasure to watch. He, yeah. I mean, he really is a outstanding player. Let me ask you this since, um, you know, as you know, cowboy analyst people or whatnot, we're looking for sure. a center. So Cedric Van Pran or, yeah. um, Zach Frazier, which one for you? Haven't seen Frazier yet. He's West Virginia, right? Yes, sir. Uh, is he, yeah. So I've, uh, Dane Brugler was talking about him uh, yesterday, talking about a lot of toughness. He mentioned the Arkansas Center, too. So there are a couple, like I said, I've, I've been able to uh, to kind of here's – the, here's the West Virginia kid then, right, mm-hmm. is what we're looking at right now. Yep. What did you think about him? Have you, have you studied him, his game, and, and how he uh, – how he plays? He's a guy that I would consider like he's not physically impressive. Like he doesn't blow you away from anything, but he is a do my job but but do it dirty type guy. So yeah. he is he is physical. He 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 does get movement. I wouldn't call him really powerful. He's he's mm-hmm. one of those guys that blocks you with want to and you know like um nasty attitude. He's a he's right. a he's a he's a very, you know, down guy. But I wouldn't call him like super powerful or anything. So he he doesn't stand out to me in in one physical trait, but he does anchor really well and uh he mm-hmm. and he just loves to block dudes and that'll get you a long way. Yeah, that's the, the thing about this, you know, and and you picked a really good game there the Texas. If you want to watch inside players yeah. and they happen to play Texas, go for it. I mean, it's crazy how that, you know, those defensive tackles will test you at every level. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So here we go. Here we go. Okay, so you, you haven't watched Zach, Zach Frazier then. So Cedric, no. um, Cedric Van Pran or Jackson Powers Johnson? Who you like more? Okay, Powers Johnson to me is really, really – I mean, to, when you start to talk about the nastiness of a player and stuff like that, and I I was I was kind of getting on – I was getting on Dane yesterday about this a little bit because he had uh, Jackson Powers Johnson going to Miami a few picks ahead of Dallas. And yeah. I said, you just couldn't drop him down a few more, could you? Yeah. And Dame was like, no, nah. but this, this guy's got some rare athletic traits. He's got the right attitude to play offensive line. He's mean. He has a nasty streak to his game. Uh, you know, he's a problem for defenders to deal with in space because I think he's kind of a road grader guy. Mm-hmm. You know, there's times he'll end up on the ground, but he started as a guard. He moved to center. He's kind of played those guys. He's got some lateral slide to him and he's got some foot speed. Once he, once the, you know, he can get some movement in space and he's very good with his angles, second level. I mean, he can help. There's a lot of things that, you know, you could tell that he played a couple of different positions because he understands like, okay, if I'm uncovered, I have to help the guard here. He keep, you know, he keeps his eyes. He's aware. He's not afraid to take a shot at the, at the defender's ribs, you know, when he, when his buddy's over there block and he'll take a, like a kind of a, a little bit of a cheap shot on him. But man, I mean, when he gets his hands, you know, inside because he doesn't have the longest arms. Sure, he kind of just gets inside on you, and then he could really, really, really push. But uh, I mean, I I was really impressed by, uh, you know, him, and and you know, you don't see him 
busting or getting fooled. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you could tell he really loves playing the game. I I was a big, big fan of his. Yeah. Um, Mean dude. Just so another mean, mean center guy. Right. We don't, you know, I'm I'm just not, I'm not used to watching centers, you know, finish people or just dig, you know, dig these dudes out of a gap. I'm, I'm just not used to, I'm, I'm used to seeing centers being hidden or, you know, Hey, combo with, with this guy and that's how we'll get movement just just a handful of these centers you can you can get one of these guys in the fourth round and be fine but that goes back to our previous conversation right yeah do you want the just fine or do you really want to knock center out the park for the next decade or so man to me and cowboy fans should and the cowboys have a great history of centers mm-hmm. i mean if you look throughout the history of the organization they've had great centers and but the the thing about it when this team was really humming along the offensive line and 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 I admit it. I mean, I I had a third round grade on Travis Frederick. I didn't think he was athletic enough. Mm-hmm. When he got to the Cowboys, man, did he prove me wrong on that? He yeah. really proved me wrong on that. His athletic ability, and uh, you know, this is what you know. But Travis also had a a mean side to him, not a dirty or cheap side, but he had a mean side the way he finished blocks. And we talk about getting hands inside and running with guys and getting guys turned and, you know, being able to, you know, the combination blocks, how smart he was to help Dak with calls early in Dak's career. Yes, that that's that to me right there. That's that's worth everything. I mean, that people talk about, oh, you're going to have a left tackle that, that does this or all pro. Hell, give me an all pro center. You know, I mean, give me a guy that this – Look what we in the in the in the playoffs now we're seeing what like a guy like how valuable Frank Ragnall is for the mm-hmm. for the Lions. You know, there's another guy, not pretty coming out of Arkansas, but sure. damn he was tough. Damn he's smart. Yeah. You know, damn he, he does everything he has to do. And the Lions are a different team offensively sure. with him in the game or him off the field. Sure. They just don't, they're not the same team. Sure. Give me that guy again. That's that's kind of where I'm at on all that. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Linderbaum was another guy. You know, Kelsey. Yeah. You know, when, when you like, when you have a good center, typically your offensive line is pretty good. And you know, you just you just need. I don't know if you need better dudes or like a better run scheme for Dallas to be able to run the football, but uh, they need something. They need something. Let me ask you this, yeah. Brian. Uh, what do you think about? And I'm gonna butcher a lot of these names. A lot of the Islander kids. Yeah. Um, I will butcher them along with you too. Oregon State, the right tackle, Talisi Fuaga. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, it's a uh, when you when you watch him play there, this might be this might be the best run blocker in the draft. I agree. When you when you when you when you look at him, when you watch him play, I mean, I was super, super impressed. This guy's powerful, amazing athletic ability for a man his size. And here's another one of you know, watch these 334 pound dudes, six, six, mm-hmm. really impressive foot athlete. You know, he puts himself in positions uh, that that he can handle any type of rush that he's going to get, the strength, the leverage, the initial punch. I mean, he could stone defenders. When he gets his hands on those defenders, I mean, they just stop. Yeah. And he plays, you know, as a as a pass protector, he's very relaxed. He doesn't appear hurried mm-hmm. or stressed out by the situation. He's a very, very light-footed blocker. Yeah. The mirror, the slide, everything about him is just super, super positive. I've been super impressed, Brian. You said it earlier when we were talking, but but these humongous, good yeah. moving dude. This is a big dude, man. Really big. <laughs> this yeah. is a big dude. And, you know, his pass blocking technique may not be as refined but he's a he's a he's a get to my landmark guy he has sure. a little bit of length not elite but you know some good solid length he's up a little yeah. high but you know coaches coach him he'll be fine but like you said though he's a nasty run game dude a yeah. tenacious there's not a run we talked about Joe Alt moving people out of the film yeah. every yeah. single play that we get from Talisi Fuaga, he mm-hmm. he moves people out of the film. Him, uh, this is him versus La, Leatu Latu from UCLA. Yeah, UCLA. Yeah, just yeah. get getting them out of there, moving people off the film. Yeah. So of course, yeah. if you were to draft him, you have to work on, um, uh, you know, like a lot of this pass technique or whatnot. But as mm-hmm. a run dude, as a run game yeah. dude, yeah. he's as physical as run game dude gets. Kind of like Panay Sewell. Remember him? Like like he was he was a no, little yeah. raw. Panay Sewell, yeah. He was That's... a little raw technique wise, but he would always fire yeah. off the ball and just move people. Same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, this this kid, and you're absolutely right. You know, and and that's a really good matchup for him. You know, over uh, you know, de- with dealing with Latu right there. Yeah. I mean, you no, know, UCLA. You you, you could watch. Uh, there's a couple times too where, <laughs> oh Latu, you, you can you can see him against some quality, yeah, quality offensive tackles there in the Pac-12. You know, and like I, I remember Jordan. We, we kind of talked about Jordan Morgan Jordan, from Arizona. Arizona. Mm-hmm is another one of these guys. And Latu, they had him over there against Morgan, and Morgan was kind of wearing him out, and he had to move him over to the other side to kind sure. of get some rushes that were able to get home. But that, that's the great thing right now, a little bit about the about the Pac-12, is we're seeing the quality of the, the this, these offensive tackles. Yeah. Jordan Morgan's not going to be like a top 20 guy. Well, well pardon me, he's, he's, he's not going to be in the 20s very long, is he? Uh, he's 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 yeah. probably gonna go through his process. He's gonna show all that athleticism and all that good movement. He's gonna go to this uh-huh. bowl game and whoop up on a bunch of people. And Jordan Morgan from Arizona is probably gonna be like a top ten tackle, huh? like like a top ten draft pick. What did, what did you like about him? What did you did you have? Would you have any notes on him? Um, I got plenty of notes on him. I like yeah, his. I'm interested what you think. I like his, like so so. First of all, he has a black belt in pass pro. Right, yeah. like, like there's there there there's no there's no movement he can't do. There's no sure. hand placement. He's always on his landmark. Cuts the cuts cuts the defender in half. Um, sure. Puncher, striker, hand fighter. If you yep. if you happen to get in the middle on him, he knows how to you know elbow tight, dip under, get back in position. Um, right. You know, um, fantastic recovery guy. To where if you do run down the middle of him, your bull rush goes away because he's so powerful. Um, what I love about him the most is that, and we've and we've just alluded to this. He's six five or so but he bends mm-hmm. he has fantastic yeah. knee bend he he gets yeah. his ass low but he doesn't lean forward that's the positives um somebody's gonna look at him and say hey i need to fix some of his run game stuff but he mm-hmm. has a lot of run blocks figured out already so his yeah. so his down block turning people inside fantastic his reach blocks fantastic uh you know some of these other miscellaneous zone blocks combo blocks fantastic mm-hmm. it's just you know maybe moving forward getting movement and, and pushing people people may not see that as like his game but moving people sideways is his game so small coaching in the run game but fantastic player probably gonna be a top man you you completely nailed this guy what he is and and this is this is one of those where i feel like that media scouts are going they're going to they're going to catch up to what the nfl scouts think about this guy Mm -hmm. you know we we kind of we kind of have him at a certain he started off as a certain level of where he was in mock drafts and all that. I think at the end of the day, as Stephen Jones would like to say, that he is going to be a lot higher on people's boards. He did have the ACL injury in the past, but it doesn't appear to bother him at all yeah. because you talked about the movement and the knee bend. And, the, you know, he's just so stable in the way that he plays. And, you know, the pad level, the balance, uh, it, it just – there's not many mistakes to his game. You're absolutely right about the run block and stuff that, uh, you know, that, that he's going to have to to deal with. But, man, the way he moves and adjusts, he wears number 77, mm-hmm. and there's some Tyron Smith traits there. He what, carries his hands kind of low, though, sure. which is, you know, which is kind of – they're going to have to probably work on that for him a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, but, man, he – Carrying him low, he gets him back quickly up in the position, and sure. you know, man, I just, uh, I, I'm, I'm. He was one of those guys I kind of fell in love with because I was watching all these other tackles. I was watching like uh, Patrick Paul at Houston, you know, and I was yeah. watching the BYU kid, and I'm like, man, these kids are higher on people's boards than this guy, and I'm like, yeah. I, I probably don't think that's going to last very long. No, nah, no. Nah. No, top five guy. What I love about this one, Brian, is that he just um, shows a lot of savvy right here because a yeah. lot of young dudes. If if you if you get to the back hip of one of these young guys, like one of these guidance, yeah. one of these paws, then they're just beat to the outside. But what right. I love about him on this play is he actually gets a little beat to that back hip, but that left hand, Brian, get that yes. up high, and he's gonna yep. scoop Buddy yep. back back inside to him. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, black belt stuff, black belt stuff. Keeping his keeping his post foot up, which is his right foot, good base the whole way, man. Come on, Brian. Come, come, come no, on, that's Brian. that's on, Brian. Brian, that's just... pretty right there, man. That is, you know, that's you know when you and again, that's what the whole idea of getting back in position. You you yeah. mentioned it. Some of these tall guys, if you get them on one foot, if they, if those those really good edge rushers, they feel you transfer your weight sure. from one foot to another, they will they will toss you. Mm-hmm. You know, I was watching. Uh, 
uh, Chris, the 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 the, the edge for Alabama uh, last night. Braswell, and, uh, Braswell, Braswell. Yeah, and I was I was impressed with him. I know we're talking; it's another position. Sure. But I was impressed with how he was able. He is such a strong guy mm-hmm. that he's able to get his hands inside. And if he, the minute he felt that weight transfer, he just tossed the guy. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's good. I like that. So yeah, these tackles have to be really conscious about, you know, of not, you know, being able to play in some balance there. Yeah. We don't hear a whole bunch of people talk about Olu Fashino from mm-hmm. from Penn State. What do you uh think about him? I'll tell you what, man. Uh, I I know we were dealing with him yesterday with with Dane. Mm-hmm. Uh was Dane feels like that he's the second best tackle prospect in in before. the draft. Uh you know, everybody talks about alt, but uh, I I kind of I kind of feel like, though, to me, there's there's some things about him because he he is a highly decorated guy. The Remington Pace Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year. I mean, the power's there. There's no problem with movement coming off the ball. He stays with his guy. I mean, he had more – if you watch the Iowa game, you know, and Iowa plays some really good defense. You know, they're, they're, he had more trouble in the Iowa game than he did the Michigan game, mm-hmm. you know, and we've learned about Michigan, Michigan's lineman will come off a tick slow. And, you know, and by the way, that is a, that we thought it was a Mozzie Smith problem. Yeah. It's actually, it carries over to Chris Jenkins and mm-hmm. others. If you watch Michigan, mm-hmm. if you watch Michigan's uh, defensive lineman and how they play, they just, the way they read, it's more of a read and then react kind of a, a scheme there. But, you know, it, the thing with our Penn state guy, I mean, he, he's, once he gets a hold of the defender, it, it, that guy's not getting away. He yeah. can hold his guy in place. I wouldn't call him fluid. I wouldn't call him a fluid moving guy for his size. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's some lateral slide. There's some agility. You know, he he can he does a good job. If he gets in a bad blocking position, he'll let his guy go so he doesn't get the holding call. Sure. So in a way, that's kind of a smart player. But man, there were some times where he kind of got put in some some bad spots, and uh, you know they asked him to pull a couple of different times, and it was a little bit of a mixed bag for him. Mm-hmm. But man, the guy finishes. He, he's the type of blocker at six six three seventeen. He can wear you down. He mm-hmm. just, you know, he he did a great job of that in the Michigan game. His power with the, those Michigan players was pretty impressive when he just kept coming off the ball. And by the end of the game, those Michigan guys really wanted no more to do with him. Let me look at a name because I know I'm not going to get this right. But number 44 from Ohio State, the edge. Uh, JT. To a, yeah, uh, go for it. 44, 44 <laughs> from Ohio State, right? Yeah, uh, uh, I always, it's, it's, he's coming back, matter of fact. That, that, <laughs> the kid's coming back to, mm-hmm. to Ohio State. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I see all these names, and I'm like going, it's okay, tough. well, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the one thing about – Tua Tuoloa? T- would you say to, uh, Tua Mualoa? Tua Mualoa, uh, sure, sure. But yeah, <laughs> something like that, yeah. Something – yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. coming back from uh, – yeah, he's he's returning. Uh, they, Ohio State had a bunch of uh, players – but yeah, he he you did you you saw the film. He had some success rushing because I did the Penn State game, mm-hmm. and he had some success rushing against our guy from Penn State a little bit here. Sure did, yeah. sure did. One thing yeah. I like yeah. to do when I'm you know breaking things down is common opponents. So yeah. J, JT has has uh, played uh, Joe Alt. JT, I love it. J, <laughs> JT, that's his name. JT, and he's um, yeah. played against Joe Alt, and he's played against uh, Mims from from Georgia. And right. he whooped on Fashino and he yeah. gave Joe all the, like a like a decent fight. You know, Joe, you know, right. Joe was cool. Right. But our Marius Mims really beat the hell out of JT. Yeah. JT was the only one like like he and I don't I, look Mims is not the the perfect technique guy. Right. He's not fully put together. He's a bit raw. But. I just look at common opponents, and he was most successful versus JT to him now. Um, and, yeah, and, and and he's kind of a weird dude for me to break down. So where are you at on Mims from Georgia? Here's a, you know, here's again, yeah, another one of those six, seven, three hundred forty pounders, and you know, he he hurt his ankle in the South Carolina game. This guy has not played a lot of games. Mm-hmm. I think he's played eight games in his career, and wow. so. You know, you 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 know, you're dealing with a guy hurt his ankle in the South Carolina game. He missed six games, like I said. 
he had that tightrope surgery, which, you know, is the, uh, which Brock Bowers had. They brought him back, the tight end. George has got this, they must have a doctor that's uh, perfected that tightrope surgery to kind of, you know, pull the, pull the ankle together yeah. and make it heal a little bit quicker yeah. because they've, they've done it on a couple of their big time players. But there's times where, like I say, a massive guy who moves well, there's, you know, there was, I'd like to see him maybe a little bit more lighter mm -hmm. and maybe that might add a little bit more quickness to his games. But I'll tell you what though, you know, the balance will come and go, but you don't see him on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really don't. We talk about being a little top heavy and he'll stumble around some, but he's tough to work through because of his size. Yeah. He, I mean, he will wall his guy off in the running game. Uh, his size is a problem for defenders to deal with because sure. he can get movement in the running. Just coming off the ball, he can get movement in the running game. Yeah, but uh, you know that's that's the thing. You know, it's 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 you know when you watch Georgia, sometimes you're you you just wonder how much movement things they can do with the scheme. You know, how much can you do with him scheme wise is sure. what they you know what you do. So, but it, it takes him a little time to get going. But man, I. I just the size and the you know the strength, the power of the player, I think is pretty impressive. Okay, I'm going to rapid fire. A was he was he a guy you really liked? Were you? I mean, you um, saw him playing. I mean, I, I, I'm sometimes I miss these guys too. Don't feel like yeah. that I'm getting the the answer for all these guys. If you did, you see something different? I mean, I, I'll tr I trust you on this thing. Did did you see a little bit better player? I think than that I think coaching is so important for these dudes. It's so important. sure. And sure. he can go to the wrong coach and end up, you know, terrible. Or he can go to somebody yeah. that can fix these three or four problems that he has. Right. Whatever. And 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 he he could end up being one of the best dudes in this draft. See, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The the thing that I think that people are really going to look at is how many games has he really played. Yeah. You know, is where you know is it? Did you get enough of a look to feel like, man, I know this guy cold. Or is it going to be a gamble that, like, man, we're betting on the come here because he hadn't played a lot of football? Okay, man, he's he's a talented guy. George is a. They, 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 there's a reason why they win the national championship the last couple of years. You know, yeah. it's a good football team. They got good players. So I had to watch South Carolina from 23, uh, 22, yeah. Ohio State, Georgia Tech, Oregon, and South Carolina from 2022. Uh, yeah. Not not clean or pretty, but he's very mean and gritty. Uh, super yep. tough. Shows show, shows power in the run game. He is a uh -huh. finisher. Heavy hands in the in the passing game. More athletic yeah. than than you think. Uh, mm. And it shows when he gets to his landmark in these um in these in these pass sets. I wish I could find yeah. a pretty good pass set, but he's a he he he's fantastic getting to his landmark. Um and that and that could be just length, could be a yeah. uh, could be a long leg thing, or he might just be a little more athletic than we thought. I don't know. Um, no, no, I think you might have him right. I, I sure. watched Tennessee, Ole Miss, and Alabama with the games I sure. saw. So you know, I was kind of like. You know, but like I say, he he hasn't played a lot of football. But man, I you know what? I think you you know the things that you highlighted. I I think you're I think you're you're dead on with that. Yeah, grip strength too. Grip strength. Once he yeah. once he grabs, yeah. he don't let go. Yeah. And yeah. um, the only you know you know just you know some some cons or whatever, right? Sometimes he leans. He needs development. And if he beats you on your first move, you can definitely beat him on your second move. So mm -hmm. um, so these edges counter moves. If 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 you have any counter moves, second plan, third plan, you'll you'll most likely beat him but he can beat you on your first so yeah. uh that's what i have on our marius mims good player good player yeah good player yeah so let me let me sort of rapid fire through a little bit of this uh why don't you like patrick paul because i don't need <laughs> you're making me you're making me gonna kill this kid aren't you no, he's, yeah he's a cool player no I, I i tell you what patrick paul and, and i was surprised i was going through like mock drafts when i first started out you know you get the list of the top 100s and stuff like that so I, I trust a guy like Dane Brugler. And so I took Dane's mock drafts and started just saying, okay, give me, he's going to give me 32 players to look at. So I started that way, and he had Patrick Paul as one of his mock draft guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I I see it. You know, he's 6'7", he's 315. He is a tall player, sure. and he plays that way. He doesn't bend his knees. He doesn't sit down on defenders. He tends to get off balance, so struggle when he has to adjust the movement. There's a good chance the, of blocking the defender when he's straight down the middle. Any type of movement is going to give him problems. Yeah. He doesn't appear overly strong with his punch. He tries to use his length in order to keep the man away from the quarterback. I feel like he's 
I feel like he's kind of a walking holding penalty, yeah. you know, with how many he misses with his hands a lot. Yeah. And I felt like he, I would say this about the, he moves in sections, like upper body moves, then the lower body moves. Then, you know, it's not a coordinated, uh, you know, we've seen these tackles that are really coordinated with their sets. And so I, you know, the, the, the angle blocks, the seal blocks, those are things that he can, he can do. But when he tries to dry block somebody, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see it there. So I was, you know, I watched him play against uh, uh, UT San Antonio, Texas, and Oklahoma State, and I just didn't see, you know, the I, the size, the length. I just think the true he lacks true athletic ability and mm -hmm. fire. I don't see yeah. the fire. You want maybe I'm getting influenced by all these other tackles that are finishers. As you should, and, you and should. Yeah. this guy just doesn't have those traits to, I think could be a better player. Patrick Paul is a catcher. Um, yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, move laterally. Well, he's more mm -hmm. of a, more of a galloper. Um, yeah. He's very stiff. He, mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't open up and runs. He turns and then he runs. Uh, right. I don't think he's very powerful. He's tall. Um, I'm not even sure how lengthy his arms are. Um, right, you know, ducks his head before he blocks people. That's not a great idea. I, I'm just not a bad idea. I think I think uh, somebody overrated Patrick Paul a little bit, but it's so yeah, I do too. Him. I think they I think they looked at the six seven and the three fifteen. Yeah, he would be he would be as you start to go down the list of guys, he would be near the bottom of that list for me sure. of the guys I've seen so far. I agree. Have you watched the kid from Yale, Karen Amagadaje? No, I'll tell you what, and I, I was talking with Dane Brugler about this because mm -hmm. uh, I said, listen, is this a kid, is this a legitimate player? Mm -hmm. He says, absolutely, absolutely. He goes, he, this is this will be Dane's pet cat mm -hmm. is who this guy will be. And I, I said, okay, well, did he transfer? Is he, did he go to Vanderbilt and Northwest? I mean, I'm, I'm talking about all these really, really smart schools mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, you can get into Yale on. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, no, he just, he, but he's, he's got an interesting story uh, about how he got to Yale. And, you know, that was always that didn't, hadn't played much football. And then all of a sudden now he's a prospect in the national football league. So yes, I've got to grab some Yale bulldog tape and, and knock this guy out. He's a he's a big. You seen solid, him play? I seen him play. I, I, I seen him a little bit. What do you think? What'd you um, think? this is my problem, Brian, and and this is what my report reads. If you're gonna play for the little bitty school, I want to see you whoop everybody. I don't want to just mm. see you kind of win. Better walk on water, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see you stalemate some guy. When you oh. when when you're playing against Holy Cross, I need to see it. I need oh, to see it, you know? You need to dominate Dartmouth then, huh? I need you to whoop those guys, right? And then, Brian, <laughs> and I don't know, this may have something to do with his football character, but when you play at sure. Yale, you know people need to see you. I yeah. went to Jim Nagy's um, senior bowl list, and he's not on it. I think that would have been a, a fantastic job sure. for, you know, for, you know, for a Yale kid to come show yeah. that he can play. But I'm I'm sure Jim Nagy would love to have him, but yeah. – I don't, I don't see him on the list. So in my mind, that's like a football character thing. I think you don't want to prove yourself. Um, and he just didn't whoop the Holy Cross kids enough. He didn't whoop the, you know, the Monmouth. He, he just, he just didn't, didn't whoop them enough. You know, so yeah, no, I, you know, you're wrong. I mean, you're not wrong at all. That's because sure. you, you talked about something earlier about seeing good on good. Yeah. You know, and then so my old boss, Ron Wolf, the general manager, Hall of Fame general manager from the Packers, like some of these kids, he said small, and Bill Polian used to do this with the, used to do this with the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. He get, you know, he found Andre Reed and from Kunstown and places like that. He drafted those small school kids. Yeah. And, but Ron always used to say, and, you know, and, and Bill got away with it, but Ron always used to say to us, he says, listen, these guys better walk on water yeah. if they're if they're going to if you're going to draft them and bring them in. Yeah. You know, the competition and all that. So yeah, it's it's a hey, it's no no uh, blast on the small school guy, but and you wonder, sometimes you wonder, could, should this kid have been, you know, should this kid at, you know, he's playing at Yale, should he have played at Boston College? Sure. Should he have played at, you know, could he have played at Pittsburgh? Mm. You know, could he have played at one of these other places in the East? Yeah. Um, you know, that's the question, Connecticut, even, you know, you could have, you could have seen him play, you know, competition, but I guarantee you, this is one of those, 
mom and dad, he, he, the kids at Yale, mom and dad are like, you're going to play, you're going to f- do school. And sure. you're going to, if you want to play football, you can go play football too. Sure. But the character thing, you're right about that. Yeah. You want to see a kid compete yeah. for sure. Um, and my last two uh, quick, quick comments, and you can, you know, whatever you want to say about them. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think ty- – uh, I don't think Tyler Guyton's all that good neither. Um, but he's mm-hmm. but he's he's kind of big and he moves a little better than everybody else. But I need football yeah. dudes. Um, be careful with that one. Be mm-hmm. careful. Be careful with that one. I mean, I know. I know. I mean, to me, this is this is one of those ones. I there's every every once in a while, if you're listening to anything that I say mm-hmm. about players, mm-hmm. and I, I there's every once in a while I'll have a blind spot about a guy. Sure. And and it's funny because I've. There's, I, I was talking to guys about this, and I'm not getting influenced because I'll stay with what I believe in. Mm-hmm. But the thing with Guyton, I didn't see it like Dane Brugler saw it. And it's not talking to Dane. I talked to some because I'm like, I know Dane. Because I saw Dane mock this kid mm-hmm. to the Cowboys. Sure. And I'm thinking, did I have a bad day evaluating him? This is one of those guys I probably need to go back and look at because what's happening to me now is – I'm telling all my scout guys, this Guyton kid, this da 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 da. You know, I'm I'm mm-hmm. saying everything about him, and they're like, "Well, Brian, think about it this da 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 da." And then, but I've had like four guys yeah. tell me, you know, this. So, I'm I'm. It's one of those things where I'm like, okay, did I have a bad day of scouting, or do I need to go back and really really watch? Six seven, three hundred and twenty eight pounds. You know, my notes are not terrible. Sure, but but you know he. It was again. It's the knee bending stuff with me. He's high. He's so yeah, he's tall. He yeah. plays so high. Yeah. You know, and and it's and I I just that bothers me. Sure. You know, and then I but these my scout buddies are all like, and I'm not I'm not getting influence. I'll stay on I'll stand on my grade. But if mm-hmm. if four of my guys are telling me something about a player, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is what I saw. Mm-hmm. This is what I saw with the guy. You know, yeah. but I did see a guy that played really tall. Yeah. And it and it was times that he was really off balance yeah. the way he played. So maybe I'm maybe you and I are right. Maybe the other four scouts in the league are wrong. But th- th- this was one of those ones where, you know, so I, I I have blind spots sometimes on yeah. some of these players. And I like, well, this guy can't do this, this guy can't do this. And then but with this guy, I don't know. Maybe I need to go back. I mean, I watched him play Texas, Oklahoma State. It just seemed like to me that that you know he was just so so upright mm-hmm. in the way he played. But you know, that's probably something I need to go back and look on. I, I I'm just that's my my opinion on this kid yeah. because my notes aren't terrible. Sure, but but just how you know it's 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 kind of a. You know when he's when he's dealing with some stuff, it, it's just not as it's not as consistent as some of the other tackles I, I have because a lot of people, like I say, are telling me like, no, no, this guy's a good player. And I'm like, I, I, I'm saying he's a good player, but I'm not saying he's up there with the other guys that you and I've talked about this morning. Sure, and he's not he's not consistent because he doesn't lean on technique. You know what I mean? Right. So he, he's right. out there. Right. I don't want to say right. he's out there winging it or whatever, but he's leaning yeah. on natural ability. And and, yeah. and look, even I can I can say it's about natural ability. You don't have to be a very nuanced guy. I just want mm-hmm. you to whoop somebody. And yeah. I don't really that's I don't really see him whooping people, you know? And that could be because his hands aren't in the right place all the time. I don't yeah. know. Um and you know, knee bend is so important to me. You know, you can you right. can be a you can be an athlete all you want to, but you're gonna have right. to you're gonna have to move at different angles on the next level you're gonna have to have different pass sets on the next level and if 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 you're stiff or you don't open up well or if if you don't know like the nuances of the game right unless you're tyler smith and can learn all this stuff in a week (laughs) then you have a hard time big dog so i'm not moving on my square i'm not moving go ahead yeah, no, that's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I really appreciate what you're saying. I'm glad, you know, I trust your evaluation too. Well, running along with my guys, the thing that I saw is, you know, there were things they asked them to do with the pulling, you know, athletic thing. I, I think that was fine. Sure. The problem is though, his feet stop at contact, they do. you know, and, and he, he doesn't drive through guys. He doesn't his feet just stop. He doesn't and anything. I'm like going, how, you know, these, these tackles that we've been watching, they're such finishers. We mentioned the, the, the Oregon state kid. Yeah. 
You know, these guys drive you off the screen. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy doesn't do that. And so I was with the knee bend, the finish. There were some, there were some, there were some questions I had about this guy. Sure. All right. Uh, And uh, one last guy, our guy from Washington, Troy Fountainu. This could be short. What you think about him? I think I'll he's tell a you what, man. Yeah, th- th- there's this this guy. It, it's when when you, he's the left tackle for the Huskies, and I think he's got really really good athletic ability. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, six four, three seventeen. He's effortless in the way he plays, the way he moves. He's light on his feet. He position the body balance, the flexibility, then space. I mean, you rarely do you see him out of control or off balance. Uh, the physical side of him is really 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 good. Um, you know, there's there's those times he just, you know, those blocks where he stays with this guy. He has those wow, what I call wow blocks, like wow, I mean, you know. But th- to me, he, I think he's got some plug and play to him. Yeah, I, I really do. I, I just think that there's there's that toughness about him. Uh, he was he was it was a battle for him against USC on the edge. That yeah. that was one of the games. I, he was much better against Oregon than he was against USC. Yeah. But man, this, this guy is a, uh, you know, I, I think at the, when you watch the, we talk about the waist benders sure. against USC, a little bit more the waist bender than he was against Oregon. That, yeah. that was, but man, I mean, his hands are really, really good and all that. I, I, I was super impressed with the way this kid plays. I say the Pac-12, yeah. you know, th- those offensive tackles out there are, are all all pretty damn steady for you to deal with. Yeah. Um, just an idea of his movement. Take a look at this play everybody watching right now. Yeah. He's a left tackle right here. He's going to reach this guy. Like, he's reaching two dudes over. He's yeah. Right here. Well, well, let me go back. Wait, bam, bam, bam. He reaches two dudes over. He's right here. Boom, boom. Yeah. That's a tough block, man. Yeah. That's yeah. a tough block to be at left tackle and not not 90, but he reaches 38. That's tough, yeah. man. And yeah. and and that dude wants to block people. He wants to explode people. And you know, you can you can just write this down just every time. If he's in the passing game, he's punching the hell out of you. Every single yeah. time. He loves yeah. to use his hands. Um, yeah. you know, um second level this, blocking pulling. This, yeah, sure. yeah. Look at the movement there. I mean, you're you're highlighting right. Look at the look at the way he kicks away from the line. Yeah. And then he's so patient the way hands, boom, hands, feet, hands, feet. And it never puts his face in the block. Mm-mm. You know, the defender has no chance against that. You yeah. know, you wonder why Michael Penix was a Heisman Trophy finalist yeah. right there. That's that's the kind of now it didn't it didn't really work out for these guys that well in the Michigan game. I, yeah. I'd love to see that game. I'm, lo- I'm I can't wait to get that game. But, man, I'll tell you what, though, this kid is uh he's uh, super impressive the way he plays. He really is with the, the foot athlete he is. All right, Brian Broaddus, we just finished our offensive line marathon type deal. You know, <laughs> I, I just haven't, you know, seen it in this way before. You know, like, you know, you uh, do a lot of shows that are buttoned up and y'all do like 10 minute yeah. segments. And that's cool, too, because there's a time and a place for that. Sure. But I want like a long. Let's just go down. A, let's just go down a list and talk about these dudes. That's kind of what I want to bring to the table. Yeah, I think every week, too, it gets even a little bit better for you and I because you have more time to study players. Sure. You know, and you and you and you really be able to dive in on some of these guys and. You know, and I, and I think the great thing about the draft is it's, it's the best opportunity to help your team. You yeah. know, I and mean, the Cowboys do it well. They draft well. And, and if, you know, if we can kind of uh, identify players for people to study maybe on their own or to learn, learn about, I, I think we're doing some good work here. We are doing good work. We have to be the logical bright spot when the internet is filled with mess. <laughs> There's still analysis in Cowboy land. Get off social media, all right? Uh, yeah. Thank y'all so much for tuning in, man. Brian brought us from 105.3 The Fan, DallasCowboys.com, The Draft Show, The Love to Start Podcast, all over. And here here with Vach Lombardi on, on Vach Friday. Vach and Brian, that's the podcast right now. Come the, and learn. The Vach and Brian Podcast. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all hit the like and go follow Brian on social media. That's B-R-Y and Broadus. all right? Peace, yeah. y'all. Y'all be cool.